Hey, all my friends. Welcome back to Tuesday with Tasha. How many of you like science and science experiments? Well, today's book is a little sciencey because it's all about sound. It's called Sounds All Around, The Science of How Sound Works, written by Susan Hughes and illustrated by Ellen Rooney. Sounds All Around, The Science of How Sound Works. Summer, sunlight, a gentle breeze blowing the clouds. It's so quiet, then a honeybee, such a tiny insect, but its beating wings make a big sound in the silence. Then off in the distance, dark clouds, and lightning. It's a giant electric spark that is so hot, hotter than the sun, and travels so fast, faster than a rocket ship, that the air explodes. The explosion makes a sound called thunder, but you don't hear the thunder right away. Count the seconds after you see the lightning. One, two, three, Why do you hear thunder after you see lightning? Light travels through air much faster than sound does, so the lightning always reaches you first. Some sounds, like the bee buzzing and the thunder clapping, happen naturally. A cat purring, a rooster crowing, waves washing the shore, subway wheels squealing around a bend, Rain dripping from an eaves trough, you sneezing. Other sounds are made to communicate something. An ambulance siren wailing, a school bell clanging, an alarm clock ringing, your voice calling to a friend. How does sound happen? Try this, pluck a guitar string. Now, watch as the string moves back and forth very quickly. The string is vibrating, and this makes the air around the string vibrate too. Once the air is on the move, the vibrations travel outward in waves. These waves spread in all directions, including deep into your ear. Inside the ear canal, the sound waves make your eardrum vibrate, and this vibration makes thousands of tiny hairs shiver. These shivering hairs turn the sound energy into signals, which travel straight to your brain. Aha! Your brain tells you you're hearing a sound and what that sound is. An eardrum is a thin piece of skin that stretches across your ear canal inside your ear. Sound waves make eardrums vibrate, just like drumsticks make drum skins vibrate. We can hear high sounds and low sounds, soft sounds and loud sounds. It all depends on the way the air vibrates. When the air vibrates quickly, you hear a high-pitched sound, like a mouse squeaking or a flute trilling. Very high-pitched sound called ultrasound is so high that human ears can't hear it. But some animals, such as dogs, bats, opossums, and porpoises, can hear it. They even use ultrasound to find their way around. Have you ever yelled in a cave or a canyon and heard the echo of your voice bounce back? When bats fly in the dark of night, they find their way by sending out very high-pitched sounds. When the echoes bounce back to them, the bats can tell that something lies in their path. This is called echolocation. When the air vibrates slowly, you hear a low pitch sound, like the brum, 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 rumble of an earthquake, or a tuba mm, pa, pa, ing. Just like human ears can't hear super high pitch sound, we also can't hear super low pitch sound called infrasound. But a squid and a hippo can, 
and so can an elephant and a whale. These animals use infrasound to communicate. Elephants communicate using very low sounds. Low sounds travel farther than high sounds, so elephants can send messages over incredibly long distances. Their low rumbles can travel as far as 6.5 kilometers, which is four miles. And the elephant receiving the call picks it up through its feet. Elephants can also hear the low rumbling of an approaching thunderstorm. Sometimes air vibrates gently. It carries only a tiny bit of energy. It presses lightly against your eardrums. The sound is soft like when leaves rustle or a pin drops on the floor. Have you heard the expression, so quiet you can hear a pin drop? Try it. Drop a pin on the floor. What changes do you have to make around you before you can hear it hit the floor? How quiet does it have to be? Sometimes air vibrates with a great amount of energy. It presses forcefully against your eardrums, like when dragsters take off from the starting line. Dragster engines are extremely powerful. Their sound can make your eyes vibrate and your bones shake. It can even make it difficult for you to swallow. We're not all race car drivers, but we all need to protect our ears. Loud noises can damage your ears for a short time or even forever. To keep your ears safe, stay away from really loud noise. And this includes loud music. If you know you're going to be near loud music, like at fireworks display, a construction site, an air show, or a sporting event, be sure to wear earplugs or industrial earmuffs. High sounds, low sounds, how do we measure pitch? It depends on how quickly the air vibrates. We find the pitch by measuring the sound vibrations during a set period of time. One vibration per second is a hertz. Turtles can hear sounds that are only 20 hertz. That's very low. Beluga whales can hear sounds that are 123,000 hertz. That's very high. Look at the high and low sounds some animals can hear compared to humans. If a honeybee's wings beat at a pitch of 200 hertz, would a bullfrog be able to hear it? What about a bat? Soft sounds, loud sounds, how do we measure sound? As you learned earlier, when an object vibrates, it makes the air around it move. We use decibels to measure how much energy is in the vibrations or how loud a sound is. The rustle of leaves is only 20 decibels. A rocket launch is 180 decibels. Look at how soft and loud sounds can be. An explosion or sudden blast makes a special kind of wave energy called a shock wave. It creates a shockingly loud sound. The storm is over, the sunlight has returned, and the quiet, but not quite. Do you hear that sound? Zzzz. The tiny honeybee is buzzing loudly home again. Wow. What an awesome book to tell us everything we need to know about sound. Sound is a lot more complicated than I ever knew. Make sure you go back and listen to the story again so you can answer the questions and try the little experiments that were suggested along the way. There were so, so, so many fun facts in here that I know you can't only listen to this story just once. Make sure to click the link in the description box if you love this book just as much as I do or if you wanna keep learning about sound forever. As always, make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel so we can keep reading more awesome books and learning more here on Tuesday with Tasha. Bye-bye.